got an exam question walk through here for organic synthesis and reaction rates. The question looks at quick fit apparatus for the prep and separation of an organic liquid, percentage yield calculation, and the calculation of the rate of reaction. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to leave a comment to suggest a topic for a future video, that would be great. Okay, so here's the question. It's on three separate slides, so as always, I'll just um, click through the slides. You can pause, have a go at the question, and then play on when you're ready for the answers. So the first part of part A, we've got to draw a label diagram for the preparation and outline a method to separate the pure sample of one bromobutane from the reaction mixture. So the important information here, I think, is the student boils the mixture for an hour. So that implies that we need to use reflux. So the diagram would look something like that. Obviously, you know, you're going to have to draw this um, by hand, so it won't be like this. I've just got this from Google Images. But as long as you get the key elements in there, you'd be fine. So obviously you need a heat source at the bottom. You need to just have your container. So a pear-shaped flask or a round bottom flask will be fine for heating in, not a conical flask. The reactants have labeled up in the flask. I've said don't forget your anti-bump and granules, but I don't think that would be essential. But it wouldn't do you any harm to include them as well. We've got the Liebig condenser here. Just be careful, there's no gaps here because we want no vapors escaping at all. And we don't want the stopper in the top. And the other important thing they'd be looking for is the flow, the direction of water. So the water always goes in at the bottom of a condenser and it comes out at the top. So for the purification, so I'm just picking out the important information for the purification step. So the student obtains a reaction mixture containing organic layer and we're given the density of that at 1.27 grams per cubic centimetre and an aqueous layer which obviously has a density of 1 gram per cubic centimetre. So basically at the end of the hour we've got this um, reaction mixture in here. The other information we're given is that one bromobutane is an organic liquid and it has a boiling point of 102 degrees C. So how are we going to separate the one bromobutane from the aqueous layer? We're going to put it into a separating funnel. Now obviously with the organic layer having a higher density than water, it's going to sink to the bottom. So we need to collect the lower organic layer. So there's just a reminder, it's got a higher density than the aqueous layer. Once you've um, collected the organic layer, you need to add a drying agent to remove any small traces of water that might still be in there. Just give an example. So the one I always use is anhydrous magnesium sulfate, or you could go for something like anhydrous calcium chloride. And then the final thing is, once you've got rid of that last bit of water, you redistill, and we're tying in this information now, and we collect the fraction that comes off at 102 degrees C. Next part of A is the yield calculation. So I've just put the equation up there again, just as a reminder. The student uses 0.15 moles of butan one all and they get a 61.4% yield of product. This stuff here, calculate the mass that is obtained. Three significant figures we need to give our answer to. So the first thing you do is work out the theoretical, well, just quote the theoretical moles of one bromobutane from the 1 to 1 ratio is going to be 0.15 and now we need to scale it down to find out what 61.4% would be. So the actual moles of one bromobutane is going to be the theoretical moles multiplied by that percentage so 61.4 over 100 and that comes out at 0 0.0921. All we've got to do now is turn that into mass so multiply by the MR of one bromobutane 136.9 so the calculator value looks like that, and to three significant figures, that's 12.6 grams. So the final part of the question, we've got to calculate the rate of reaction at 30 minutes. So what we're going to do is draw a tangent to the curve that hits the curve at 30 minutes. 
Now, a common mistake I see when I'm marking stuff like this is a student will literally just read off the Y value at 30 minutes and the X value, which obviously is 30 minutes, and they would just go that divided by that. Now, that's not how you calculate rate. It's the change in Y, so the change in concentration, divided by the change in time, the change in X. So rate is a change in concentration divided by change in time. So the change in concentration I've got for the tangent I've drawn is roughly 0.185 moles per decimeter cubed. And the change in time, change in X, is 73, 74 minutes. So the gradient is therefore that divided by that, which comes out at this value here. So I'm giving that the three significant figures, 0 0.00253. Now obviously tangents are variable, so yours might be slightly steeper than mine or slightly shallower than mine, but the, the exam board would apply a sort of plus or minus 10% kind of tolerance on what they think is the, is the right answer. So as long as you're within, say, 10% of that, you'd be fine.